Hello everyone. In this video, first I'll cover what is NAT gateway and its different features and then explain the different scenarios in which NAT gateway can be used. And finally, a lab demo in which I'll show the step-by-step -step deployment of NAT gateway. So let's start. First of all, what is NAT gateway? So NAT gateway is a managed service which provides source network address translation which means the traffic from your private IP addresses will be converted into a static public IP address. And for the application which is outside your environment, we'll only see the traffic coming from a static public IP address or a range of IP addresses which are defined in the NAT gateway. Being a managed service, NAT gateway is highly available and scalable. So you don't need to manage its high availability as well as scalability. So basically using the NAT gateway, the private resources of the Azure like virtual machine, get the outbound connectivity to the internet. So let's talk about the features of NAT gateway. So the first one is static public IP address. During the creation of NAT gateway, you provide the public IP address to it. And when you use the NAT gateway for outbound connectivity to the internet, so the application in the internet will always see the public IP address of your NAT gateway for all the traffic coming through it. So in case the whitelisting has to be done on those application, they need to whitelist only the public IP address of NAT gateway. The second feature is simplified outbound connectivity. The configuration of NAT gateway is very simple. Once you create the NAT gateway, you just assign it to the subnet and all the resources in that subnet by default will start using the NAT gateway for outbound connectivity. The third one is high availability and scalability as it's a managed service. It's high availability is managed by Azure. And in the case of scalable, it can go up to 64,000 concurrent connections for a single public IP address. So if you will scale up the NAT gateway IP addresses, then you will have more concurrent connections. And the last one is enhanced security. Because when you create the NAT gateway, all the outbound connection from the subnet will go through it. However, NAT gateway integrates with route table as well as NSG. You can filter the traffic which should go through NAT gateway by using the route tables as well as NSG. So these were all the features. So now let's discuss the different scenarios where you can use the NAT gateway. So the first scenario is that you are a small organization and you don't have any Azure firewall or NVA network virtual appliance. And by default, when you have a virtual network VNet and multiple subnets in it. By default, the virtual machines have outbound connectivity to the internet. So there is a by default outbound connectivity. However, if there is an application which are running in another environment and there is a firewall where the whitelisting has to be done. In that case, it's difficult to manage using the outbound default VM connectivity. The reason is because there is a CIDR range of public IP addresses, which are for the virtual network in Azure. And then you have to whitelist all those CIDR ranges in the firewall. But if you want a static public IP address to be whitelisted, you can create a NAT gateway, which will be attached to the different subnets and all the connectivity will be through the NAT gateway. And then you have to just whitelist the public IP of the NAT gateway in the firewall and the application which is in the internet or the different environment can be connected using the public IP. So this is the scenario which is very basic. Now another scenario is you have Azure virtual environment where you have multiple VNets. like a hub VNet, this is hub, another one is spoke, you have VMs in the spoke VNet and there is a hybrid setup which is on-prem. There is a firewall and there is a VPN connectivity between, so it's VPN gateway. So there is a side to side connectivity between Azure and on-prem. So the default system routing is configured the way 
that any inbound connection to these virtual machine in Azure should be through on-prem firewall. So the traffic will be through on-prem firewall and then hub to spoke connectivity will be through peering. And the same way you can configure the outbound connectivity too. And if you will not define any user defined route, this will be the system default route. So all the inbound and outbound connectivity of the virtual machine will be through on-prem firewall. Now the problem with this approach is that the traffic coming into the Azure is always free. However, if there is a lot of traffic going out of the Azure and using the VPN gateway, then there will be an extra charges for that. And if your application is latency sensitive, in that case, there are multiple hops because the traffic before going to the internet is, is going to the hub, then to the VPN gateway, v, VPN gateway to on-prem firewall, and finally to internet. So this adds a lot of hop. And if your application is latency sensitive, then it will be a problem for you because then, then there could be a chances of latency. And in this scenarios, organization, they create NAT gateway in the hub subscription. NAT gateway and attach that NAT gateway to the subnet of the virtual machines. Now create the UDR user defined route because by default the traffic will go to on-prem firewall but if you will define the UDR to the internet so then the traffic will go through NAT gateway and to the internet. So in this case there are less hops and the traffic of the NAT gateway can be filtered using UDR as well as NSG. So you can make sure which traffic should go through NAT gateway and the rest of the traffic will go through on-prem firewall. So this is a bit of a complex scenario, which is used by the customers too. However, the most recommended approach is create a firewall here and then, then it can take care of the source netting and advanced network filtering. But if you don't want to pay for the firewall, then you can use the NAT gateway. This approach is much cheaper. So now the third scenario, you have Azure environment with multiple VNets. This is hub VNet, spoke VNet, and they are peered together. Peering is there. This is another spoke. There is a peering between hub and spoke and there is an Azure firewall which is created. So by default, all the traffic from the virtual machines will go through Azure firewall. So the user defined route has next hop as Azure firewall. But you have a very specific requirement of IP anchoring. Just take an example. This one is non-prod spoke. This one is production. Now all the traffic from the non-prod should go through a specific IP address. This is PIP, public IP. You can have multiple public IP on firewall, but Azure firewall doesn't support IP anchoring. So if you want the non-prod subnets to go through PIP1, and there are two PIPs, PIP1 and production subnet through PIP2 because there is a specific requirement that these PIP1 should be whitelisted. Like in the case of SAP Cloud Connector, the whitelisting has to be done on SAP side where there are specific public IPs that has to be whitelisted. So in that case, in SAP, PIP1 should be whitelisted separately for non-prod connection. PIP2 should be whitelisted separately for prod connections but Azure Firewall doesn't support IP anchoring. You can't specify the source and anchor it to the specific public IP. However, this is not supported in NAT Gateway 2. So in the NAT Gateway, if you assign multiple public IP address, the IP anchoring can't be done there too. But an easy approach to solve is to create two NAT Gateways, one for prod, one for non-prod. So now you can define the user defined routes, which are specific for the SAP public IPs. Then only that specific traffic from the cloud connector will go through this NAT gateway, which is 
production NAT gateway and another traffic from non-prod will go through non-prod NAT gateway and this is kind of a workaround for IP anchoring. Uh, why this is a better approach? The reason is you can even create two different firewall and assign one, pi one IP to each but creating a separate firewall for just an IP anchoring is way more costlier than creating two different NAT gateways. So this is a very complex scenario. Actually, this is BTP connection in cloud connector for SAP. So if you are running that, then SAP and Azure documentation also recommend to use the NAT gateway in the spoke subnet so that you can filter the non-prod outbound traffic as well as prod outbound traffic. So these were the three different scenarios where you can use the NAT gateway. Now I'll quickly show you a step-by-step -step deployment of NAT gateway in Azure. So I'm logged into Azure portal now and if I'll go to virtual machines, I have already created one virtual machine. It's a Windows server, Windows 2022 and it doesn't have a public IP address. So just a private IP address, which is part of the virtual network. So if I'll go to the virtual network, let's click here. So this is the address space slash 24. And this is the subnet where the virtual machine is lying. And another one is the Bastion subnet because I haven't provided the public IP address to this virtual machine. So I have to log in using the Bastion. Let's go to the virtual machine and connect using the Bastion. So connect. And open the Microsoft Edge. Let's look for what is my IP address. And it's showing 4.197.182.177 because there is no public IP address attached to the virtual machine. So it picks up the IP address from the, from the pool of public IPs of virtual network. So let's go back to Azure portal and deploy NAT gateway. Let's look for NAT gateway, create, and I'll use the resource group RG NAT, which I've created. Test NAT 001 or Australia East. You can deploy in availability zone, but I don't want to. And next outbound public IP address. Either you can create a complete prefix. So how many IP address you want to add or because we just want a single IP address, I'll create a new IP address. NAT PIP 01. Let's deploy in this virtual network. However, I'm not attaching it to any subnet for now. Review and create and create. Now the deployment has started. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once the NAT gateway is deployed. NAT gateway is deployed now. As you can see the deployment details, first a public IP address is created, then the NAT gateway, and then the virtual network association. So let's go to NAT gateway and it's saying that it's not currently operational. You need to attach this NAT gateway to the subnet. If we'll go here to the subnet, it's not attached for now. In the outbound public IP address, this is 196.142.112. And if we'll go back to our virtual machine, it's 177 in there. Just remember this IP address and let's attach this NAT gateway to the subnet where the virtual machine is lying. So let's select the virtual network and this is the subnet and save it. So now the default system routes with route all the outbound traffic from this subnet through NAT gateway. So let's go back to Bastion, close it, open the Microsoft Edge, what is my IP? And this time you can see it's changed from 177 to the NAT gateway public IP address. So just wanted to show how you can deploy the NAT gateway, attach it to the subnet 
and get a static public IP address for all the outbound connections. However, if you want some filtering, you can do it using the route table as well as the NSG, which I'm not showing in this video, but you can do all those filters. You can make sure what traffic should be going through NAT gateway and you can specify the different ports and the IP addresses in the outbound setup of NSG. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.